Yo, Team Roman. Time for a little pep talk. Follow me. When I have my gray market glasses on, that means business. We will be victorious. I want Roman to lose. I am the pettiest of the petty kings, and I come for blood. Guys, don't forget, before the video starts, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all those cool things to help our channel grow. Let's get back to the video. Adrian, we're Roman. a week into our team competition, and we haven't decided a what the big prize is going to be. That what? is true. We have the teams. Are we talking automated. tattoos, jumping out of planes? What are we talking about? I made my draft picks. Tattoos? No, I don't know about tattoos. Unless you really guys really want to get a tattoo, because we're going to win. We're already off to a good start. So, really? Can I pick the tattoo? <laughs> really? You really want to get, get a my, tattoo, right? Get my face. My <laughs> face with, my, with a bald head. Right here. I'm going to look like Pops. Now, as far as the winners and the losers of the competition, we already decided what the winners are going to get, obviously. The question is, what do the losers get? And I figured, you know what? We'll ask your opinion. So comment below what you think the losing team should get. And no, I'm not jumping out of an airplane, and nor am I going to scuba dive with the sharks. So please keep it simple. Thank you. All right, could we have a little pep talk with sure. the kids? Let's do it. Yo, Team Roman, time for a little pep talk. Follow me. When I have my gray market glasses on, that means business. All right, let's go, Team Roman. You're not on my team. <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Don't talk to my people like that. I think you are. We can have you meeting in Anna's office. Go ahead. Yeah. Bye. You got some big sales already down. I know you did a thing with whatnot. That's gonna help. Cause we're going off. Of <laughs> you laughing at? You ain't got shit. <laughs> I have two RMs right now that I had out on memo that didn't pan out last month, but they came back in the two and the three, which can potentially give us seven hundred thousand in revenue. Number one. What do you have that's you working on that was big? You're working on the lap timer. Lap timer and. Then I want to talk to you about that 1815 trade because he wants to do something with two MBFs. Okay. I need you to push him like you always done because I want you over that million dollar mark this month. I need you over that million dollar mark this month. I'm going to do my best. My problem is, is that the Jorn set that I have a potential sale on is going to be on hold and it's not, it's going to be on hold past this month. So we can't go towards this month. Can we take a deposit so it'll count? I wish, maybe. Sabina knows what to do. I need you to you to ensure that and talk to Nina that Sabina is more consistent with posting uh, jewelry and stuff on her Instagram. She's also doing very well with watches. She started to so help her out any way, shape, or form we can. Now, because this is a revenue uh, competition, we're going to look over all the stuff we have that's high ticket items. We have a ton of watches that are over two hundred thousand dollars downstairs. Right. right? Uh, where are we at so far for the month? What did we do last week? Last week was really slow. I'll be honest. Well, it's a slow month, which is actually a good time to have this competition because July, August are usually the deadest month of the year. But we're gonna prove it. I otherwise. think I did like two hundred or two fifty or something. Zero. That's a problem. So get on that. Make sure she goes from zero to hundred real quick. Real. But, no, that's bad. <laughs> we know what we need to do. Let's identify some big pieces. I have, I have some inquiries that came in to me over the weekend. I'll hand them over to you guys and we'll get this done. Gave Adrian a bit of a head start. I allowed him to pick Anna and put her in the competition, which I really shouldn't have because Anna probably sells more than the kids, as I like to call them, combined. Chris, let's go. Anna, team meeting. I've assembled this meeting. We're at war with Roman, team Roman. But I will say this, as your leader, we will be victorious. Yes. Now, I have... Uh, excuse me, competition, get out of here. Yeah, what the hell is this, yo? Somebody shoot him. <laughs> Adrian's not your kid. Ask Roman. Ask Roman. Ask Roman, I don't know, I have no idea. Adrian um, doesn't mess around. He I don't doesn't mess like around. Like, I don't like to lose. He doesn't lose. like... Everything I did, is a competition. I did a little bit of espi espionage on um, Team Roman. Yes. And his pep talk was very, very cute. But I will say this. <laughs> There's nothing cute about this. No. All right, we're here to win. We're not, we're not playing. We we're have an edge. Games. We have an edge. You know what the edge is? Yeah, we're the team. Well, besides, besides we're the team is the <laughs> fact that we have, Marco, hello, is that we have access to inventory coming in first. Right? That's a big edge. So if we lose, if we lose, heads will roll. All right? So far, so I know myself, but I know Anna are off to a good start. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're off to a good start thus far. It is the second week of July. 
and things are rolling wrong. Chris is making sales and I don't have to, she, you know, they speak for themselves. Marco, I see a few things in the pipeline. We got a 5212 in, Snoopy in, which I think you're working on. Um, and just I'm a working whole, on the Odysseus too. Odysseus, Hercules, okay. I want everybody's full attention, full focus, because we will be victorious. Let's go. Let's kick their asses. Should we get should we get like special hats made? For sure. A t shirt? <laughs> For sure. T yeah, we have we have like three <laughs> three weeks left of the month. Now we have to come up we have to come up with, with what we want them to do when we win. That's easy. What is it? Oh, no no, we gotta we have to like we have to nip this in the bud now. What do you guys think should be their Punishment? Punishment for losing. Comment, like, subscribe, <laughs> shout out, WhatsApp, FaceTime, Zoom. <laughs> I'm not losing you this. Live, shit. You live for I, this. Li I live for this. Shit. <laughs> you know what they call you, right? The what petty a, king. The petty. I'm the motherfucker. <laughs> I am the pettiest of the petty kings. I'm and I come for blood. Winning without a plan is not winning at all. So, Chris, I need you to just keep keep blasting the chats. Literally, you, I, it's I see working it. pretty well. See, it's working pretty well, but we need to blast more. If you need any help on prices, let me know. Anna, I don't have to tell you anything. We just, we do what we do, baby. Break. Everybody here knows that I do not like to lose and I take winning very, very seriously. So anytime there's a competition, I bring my A game. Adrian's team has nothing on us. So a dealer friend of mine reached out to me with whom we share a client. So I have a phone call with him now to try and uh, close it out. Hey. Yeah, sorry. So I have a phone call tomorrow with someone from Philips. I'd rather do the deal here with you. What's the last you heard from him? I haven't met him today yet. You're meeting with him in person again? Yeah, yeah, yeah for the next few days. Maybe. Speak with him today, tell him that bit of information again. I don't want it to come off as if we're trying to push him, but at the same token, right. as I said, with this watch is first come, first serve. And if Phillips makes me an offer I can't refuse, I will not refuse it. I think that for sure he has talked with Alex about uh, this piece. So let's uh, touch base uh, in a few hours after you have spoken with him, or, or maybe while you're sitting sure. with him. If you need me to get on the phone while I'll, while you're there, let me know. Keep me posted, like I said. All right, I'll talk Bye. to you later. Bye. Bye. So the infamous Jordan set, right? For the first time ever, we decided to sell something uber rare publicly. 99.9% .9 of the super rare pieces that make it into this office, they don't make it into the light of social media. And there's a reason for that, because it's easy for something like that to get burned when all of a sudden you get a gajillion dealers working on something, uh, a gajillion clients calling around asking opinions about this watch everywhere. It's very easy to burn a rare item and all of a sudden it becomes not so rare. But not our first rodeo. I wouldn't have invested that kind of money if I didn't think this was a sellable item, a rare item, and a profitable item. So we're still cracking away. So the gentleman we're about to meet already bought a Coral Red OP, which you'll see here in this box, and he's interested in possibly trading for a couple other pieces we have. So I show him a few things, maybe make another deal. What's up, Chris? How you doing? Good, how about you? Good to finally meet you, man. Likewise, nice to meet you. you too. Man, I was really excited to to add this piece as it's well. It's a cool piece. I like how it, like certain light, it hits like orange kind of. Yeah. I mean, the, the cool thing about these were they only produced them for like two years. It yeah. was a short run and them going discontinued. I have the yellow as well. Yeah, I saw that. I was figured yeah. I'd bring the green now. We the had green. the blue one as well. Yeah. I do like the yellow too. Adrian, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I was saying, were you guys running a car dealership or a jewelry business, <laughs> man? Because the lot's looking good, uh, man. Hopefully to get better soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't you bring two Rolex pins? I personally love the white gold Prezi with a green dial. Right, right? okay. A little understated, a little under the radar. It's not as flashy, mm -hmm. obviously, as, as rose or yellow, but that's what I would recommend. Yeah. And these are dated this year, and this was okay. a 2017 book complete. Okay. Um, so 2022, 2017. Right. Everything. Oh, this, year, this year, right? Yeah, I was yeah, just going to probably hold on to that one to complete my set here. I was going to I was gonna start collecting these colorful pieces, and then the price started to go up. I'm like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. And now I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's with everything, man. You don't have that crystal ball. You can't tell, no, right? That's for sure. We don't have any chocolates, though. Yeah, ro ro rose chocolate we don't have. Like, this is just a yellow gold Prezi. Mm -hmm. I would be interested in more so, like, complete. Yeah, it's complete. Okay. It's complete. I think we have two two yellow gold units for sale. Is this a uh, 30? That's a, no, it's a 40. That's 40, okay. Yeah. This is sick if you can pull it off. I pull it off. 2021, new stock card. It's unworn. What would you offer me on these? Right, so um, in full links, I have box, card, white tag, you name it. Complete. So in trade for that, 19, and same here. 
38,000 cities too. We have a few hulks. They went up to ridiculous numbers and they mm -hmm. just kind of came down. Yeah, they it. came down hard. Yeah, so 38,000 for these two. Yeah. I think on this one I'm in. You could have probably high. been into it high. Yeah, yeah I'm like 20. Well, welcome, welcome to welcome to our world. Essentially, I would do two for one with this. Walk away with the yellow gold. You could walk away two for one or 60 minus 38, which is 22,000 out of pocket. When it comes to trades, I kind of want to see what the equal value of his two watches for another one of ours is. Just an easy, quick swap is what I'm looking for. So he's obviously on the Rolex train, so let's pull out some more Rollies. Pull out this guy, pull out this guy. Let's just go to town. Let's show options, man. It's a full menu. Stuff's kind of all over the place. So we got a root beer. Obviously, I'm biased. Mm -hmm. I wear one. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, white gold uh, GMT Pepsi with the blue dial. Mm -hmm. Great value. Yellow Sky has been the same price for a year, more. You know, if you want to talk about just store value, that's what that is. Matter of fact, that's my favorite Rolex period. Sky Dweller, I think it's the best Rolex. Highest complication, least amount of production. Mm -hmm. I like the white gold olive, but it, if you could work me out something a little bit better, how much room do you have on it? What's the offer? Um, don't be shy. It's all good. Yeah, I, you, no, you won't hurt my feelings. For sure. No, I'm just <laughs> trying to, again, I want to be fair to and respectful, but if you could get me to, can we get it down to like 55? To what, the white gold? Yeah. Straight kick, kick. Um, that's I'm gonna be upside down there. Like honestly, the, the, the best I would do is 20,000 difference, which because I'm working super tight on that white mm -hmm. gold. You could value your trade-ins for whatever you want, but I, the way I, I see it, it's, it's 38 for those two plus 20 for the white gold. I'm probably better off just cashing those out, like selling them and bringing it back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try to offload these. Okay. And then work with uh, Chris here and try to make something happen. I think if I just bring more cash, it'll, it'll allow me to have a little bit more buying power sure. in these. So here's another example of what is a client to do in a market where prices seem to be falling on a lot of these blue chip watches, right? We have a client here who wants to trade in his watches, but the offer that we made him, although we feel is fair, he seems to think he can get a little bit more for his trades. And that may be the case, right? If we're buying the product from him, granted, we would like to make a profit as well. So I told him, listen, if the prices don't make sense for you, by all means, please try to get as much out of your watches as you can without our help and then come back to us to make the trade happen later. I appreciate you having me here today and start of a of new relationship. Of course, man. Uh, but Glad yeah, absolutely. What I'm going to do is just, um, I have some cash, maybe offload some of these, get some more uh, free up some so I can negotiate no a little bit better with you. Yeah, I mean, that. you're welcome to throw them up on Moda, see what Perfect. you can get for them. Absolutely. Basically how that gentleman found us was through Moda. He saw my post on Moda Facebook group and then you'll hear us talking about that in the conversation. And I just started posting on there, so he wasn't sure, but um, that's how he found us. He wanted to originally do some trades, but he didn't really want to sell the watches for the value that we were giving for the trades, which is, which is fair, but we still ended up working a deal because he ended up buying the Coral Red OP off of me. And it's looking like he's wanting to buy an AP 15500 as well. So. Jesus, I got people filming me. I got Alex coming over and slapping the bag of chips off my desk. Nobody did that. You 100% did that while I was on the phone with the client. But right now, I'm working on a few big things. I am working on selling the Armor Piquet Michael Schumacher lap timer. So this is the first ever mechanical lap timer. So to engage the splits or the, uh, the lap times, right? Let's just say you're driving like a madman, right? And bam, this is your first lap, right there. So that's where your first lap is. You're driving even faster, driving even faster. Bam, you just beat, beat your new lap, right? So this is the first ever mechanical lap timer, which is incredible. So I'm working on this because uh, if I can get this sold in the first week of July, that would be one hell of a deal. My personal goal is to beat, uh, beat 800,000. Uh, in total sales. Last month came pretty close. Uh, it was about 130 off. So a little more grinding, a little more pushing, and we'll get there. So I'm still working on the Schumacher lap timer. Uh, the client that we're working on selling this to is actually a very old client of ours, and I know that he's uh, watching this, so uh, <coughs> you, need a, you need a Schumacher in your collection. Just, just saying. Personal goals for this month is to be a little bit more organized. Uh and to kill it <laughs> and to win that next competition. Rewalk. Yo, how's the avocado toast? It's amazing. My personal goal is probably two million. 
I'll probably end up raising that as I approach 2 million. July is notoriously a slow month for the industry, so it's really awesome to see the team hitting their goals every single week. IWJG coming up in a month. Hope to see you guys there. Probably not because it's a dealer only show. <laughs> but we're gonna have a good we're gonna have a good show. It's gonna be a good month. Um, I'm gonna go back to eating my avocado toast. I would like to repeat last month at least, maybe do better. I would like to do, I guess, more than half a million, if possible. So Chris is what they call one of a kind. That being said, he's on the other team, so, uh... Sucks. Hello? Hey, can you come to my office, please? Sure. Right, have a seat. All right, so look, it's, uh... You're on my team this month, remember? Yes. So we briefly discussed the wholesale thing. We had a meeting with everybody and the wholesale jury and the things. The report that I just pulled, over 6,000 records, right? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of these dealers are watch dealers, a lot of these dealers are jewelry dealers, a lot of these dealers are both. Okay. What me and Alex are going to do is we're going to uh, basically go through this list more or less one by one over the next day or two. We're gonna delete those that, let's say, don't wanna do business for whatever reason okay. might be possible. Uh, some of this data is fully complete. You have the phone numbers, you have the emails, addresses. What I want you to do is, in your own words, because look, I know what I would say to a dealer, right? Hey, I'm Sabina, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm new here. I'm, I'm, I sell jewelry, right? I'm gonna be a contact here at LB. You've done business with us in the past. I wanted to just reach out, introduce myself and find out what exactly you're interested, how often you want to be contacted. I do want you to do some sort of a write-up, but it doesn't have to be anything formal. Just send me an email of how you would, in your own words, introduce yourself to these people okay. and essentially how you would pitch them out of everybody that's on our team. So who do we have? We have you, we have Adrian has Anna, which is a big one because, you know, Anna sells more combined than all of you. So, yeah. so I'm going to have to make myself an Anna also, but, but I think doing jewelry wholesale, these people can potentially buy a hundred grand at a time. Yeah. The average ticket item on jewelry is not as high as on watches, but the margins are. What this does is it gives you a consistent flow of wholesale business that we do here on a regular basis. And it will fill in the gaps between us going to trade shows and seeing a lot of these people. It will fill in the gaps of, you know, reaching out to clients that may have bought something three years ago and then didn't really reach back out to them because when it comes to wholesale, it's not like retail, right? That is gonna allow you to propel in terms of numbers, because yeah. I need you to, please. <clears throat> I need to as well. Because yeah, you need to as well, right? I mean, listen, you had a nice commission check this month in addition to what else you made. but you It was know. okay. I, I sometimes feel like I don't know where I'm supposed to be at. I know that everyone's different and I am like, even though I'm balancing two jobs, I feel like I should be doing better. Look, it's pretty obvious that you can't physically sell, you know, $20 million a month. You just won't have enough time a day to do so, right? Yeah. But I've told you that in the very beginning when you said you wanted to transition into sales is that at the end of the day, you just ask yourself a question, have I done everything? And this is my result, I've done my best. It can get better next month, it can get worse next month. There's yeah. no rhyme or reason. So go, Thank I'm gonna be so back much. with you on this and we'll, 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 we'll talk about this in detail once I get through it with Alex. Sounds good, appreciate it. So the jewelry side of our business, you guys do get a glimpse here and there uh, in regards to our jewelry business, which we do wholesale as well as retail. We do to the tune of $25 million a year in jewelry alone may seem like, oh my God, well, why bother with jewelry? You do so much more in watches. Well, the margins are better in jewelry and that's a known fact. So the secret thing I wanted to do with Sabina is actually take the wholesale side of our jewelry business and treat it as a retail side of the business. Me and Sabina came up with a little something that's gonna boost her sales for sure. Kind of like you're running. <laughs> Hello, Ryan. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. I'll bring out the watch. You can have a seat. Okay. Would awesome. you like some water or anything? Coffee? I'm good, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. This is the 5905 Patek. Okay, so awesome. here is the watch in question. <laughs> if you want to look, look <laughs> something for yourself, we have a lot of watches here as well. No, I'll, I'll just take this. Right? I'll take this. <laughs> Oh my God. So he was interested in the Patek Philippe 5905 and he had a friend that lives in Philadelphia. So I told him why don't he just stop by and take a look in person. Actually, I'm gonna, I'll FaceTime him. Hello. Hello. So I have your friend here, one moment. Hey Angel, how you doing? 
So okay. it's the back. So and it's that's that's the that's the uh, uh, and that's the forty two milli millimeter version, right? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna send you a couple okay. pictures as well, Angel. So no, no blemishes, scratches, no, nothing. It looks unworn. No, no, it looks it looks perfect. It's hard, it's hard to do this on the phone. I, mean, I know. I know. <laughs> well, I told you we have the seven day return policy, and you mentioned you've seen this watch in person as well. Have you seen this in person? No, I've never seen. Oh, okay, okay. Well, again, it's if you don't like it for any reason in person, you, we have it the seven-day return policy, so you can send it right back. What do you think, Ryan? You don't like it? Oh, dude, I love I it. Think, I think Ryan wants <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is sold. <laughs> It's been a really busy week so far. Unfortunately, Roman hasn't sold the Jorn set yet, so I have to put the team on my back, and uh, I might have a client that will be interested in purchasing the Jorn set. I believe that this month, I'm gonna sell the Jorn set. Oh, yeah, what makes you say that? So I, I have two, two potential deals that I could work out with the Jorn set. However, they're both trades. Start with one, what's the one? The first one would be 5176G. The 40th anniversary Nautilus. 5176. Is it the 5976G? Try again. Am I tripping? Oh, 5976G. All right, so he has a 5976G and that's it. That's what he wants to put in trade? <laughs> yeah. He also wants the platinum brick. The other client wants to trade in. He has, I think, three gem set paddocks. The green sapphire uh, Nautilus. Nautilus. And okay. then he has a ruby rose Nautilus. Which rose gold? Um, platinum or white gold? Platinum. So, so he has a platinum 57, it's not a 57, but it looks like 5711 Ru uh, emeralds. Yes, and then he has the ruby rose, ruby rose, rose gold, and the emerald celestial. And the emerald what? Celestial, the emerald celestial. Oh, any of these your existing clients? The one with the paddock. The one with the, the paddocks. Paddock? Paddock? Sorry. Oh, the one with, with the, the paddocks. Uh, with the paddocks, yeah. Okay. The first question I would ask him is say, look, you're looking to get for your paddocks, because I think we can work out a deal on the tip. Okay. Hey, it's Alex from Luxury Bazaar. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? So, um, real quick, I'm here with Roman. Uh, I don't know if you watch our channel. Roman is the owner of Luxury yeah, Bazaar. Yeah, Roman, what's going on, buddy? He's right hey, here. how are you? <laughs> I'm always happy to step in and help one of my sales guys, and it's irrelevant whether it's competition or not. Had it been a member of Team Adrian, I would have done exactly the same. Nice, nice to meet you via the phone. Uh, same. I want to chat with you about the set and about your anniversary paddock. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind telling me, you don't have to answer this question. Did you pay retail for that watch or did you buy it on the secondary market? I paid retail oh. and, the, and the 40th that wasn't the chrono, I paid a little bit over retail, but you know, that, that was years ago. Yeah, you have a humongous upside. So let's let's talk about the uh, the Chrono, right? The fifty nine seventy four, right? Is the reference fifty nine seventy six. Fifty nine seventy six. Uh, uh, there was a time before this little dip took place a couple of months ago that the watch people were asking upwards of eight hundred thousand for the watch, which is insane. It never sold for eight hundred thousand. The highest sale that I know of was six seventy five for a brand new one with stickers. Uh, with that said. Today, you, know, you can find them as high as somebody less than one for a million dollars, but then you can also find it as low as 600,000. In reality today, it's a half a million dollar watch plus minus to sell, let's, let's say. The price is what the market is. Exactly, for. but it's in your favor because by you putting that watch towards a Jorn set, you collectively taking your cost down by about $400,000, and which is good because at the same token, you're not really showing capital gains on that watch. So with the set, just to run through it quickly, what you're getting here is the follow. Starting with the big one, and I think that's most of the money of the set is the Terbion. And the most special thing about it, obviously is the fact that they have never made that watch in stainless steel with a, with a gold movement or a gold dial. And on top of it, they utilized the original movement from 2003 that went into the original Turbion. So that's what makes that watch most special. Obviously, same goes for the Resonance. Like, I think the bulk of the money is in those two watches. Uh, which, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's those two. But I'm not a flipper. I'm not trying to split this up. But it's also good to know what, where the value is, right? It's, it's good yeah, to know sure. where the value is. Now, the other three watches, I can simply take... There's probably, there's probably 10 to 20 grand in the box. Uh, it's 50, actually. That box fetched $50,000 50, okay, exactly. 50, at auction is a record of it. So the way I broke it down is I just simply said that, look, there's at least a million and a half between the Opta and Turbion. 
a couple of hundred grand on the other one, it, it's not, we're not too far from $200,000. And I've yet to mention that the value that I would add on to the fact that this is a full as new condition, put together set numbers matching, right? That's really where the money comes in. So look, uh, give me your thoughts on uh, the set. Uh, if you want to sleep on it again, in terms of numbers, again, uh, you will have an upside if you were to trade in that 5976. Uh, You're not the guy that was uh, looking to cash out of his watches and make money, but at the same token, this is not a small amount of money. So you have to do your own math in regards to what your debt cost is going to be ended up on the set. Because if you were to go out and sell your paddock today, you'd be showing about 400,000 in capital gains when you're trading the watch and you're not. And uh, maybe we can make this happen. All right, I'm going to run. It was a pleasure. Uh, give it a think. Let me know. Let me know if you have any more questions. Alex is here to answer any more questions you may have. If you feel like chatting again uh, to finalize this, give us a call back and we'll do the same. I appreciate it, guys. All right. Take care. Bye. Adrian, can I ask you a question? What are your thoughts on the new Richard Mill uh, sticky note watch? I mean, from an engineering perspective, I think it's phenomenal. Right. What about looks they, wise? They put the tourbillon in like the thin in a piece of like. What is it's thinner than the Octo? Thinner. I mean, the, the feet of technology is impressive. The looks of the watch. Mm. I still buy it. I gotta say. Like, so, if, like if I was a billionaire. So, I saw, so yeah, when I saw it first yesterday, yeah. my first response was, "What in the actual f is this?" I thought it was a joke. Like I thought it was like a spoof watch. Um, look, it really, it, honestly, it really depends what. The individual's net worth is. It's really big, actually. It's big. Yeah. It's thin, but it's, I mean, I don't think it's bigger than the Octo width wise, right? That's probably it's comparable. It's, it's like, pretty comparable in size. Like I mean, the Octo is big. It looks like a plate. It looks like it looks like, it looks like I went to a, like a Ferrari lunch <laughs> and ran over. Ran over. Like I went to a Ferrari lunch, and that was that. Looks like the plate. Yeah, I mean, if the watch was offered to me, I think I would probably just buy it just to say, you know, I have it. It's very hard to say. Sometimes when you have these oddball watches, for lack of a better term, come out, it's very hard to gauge how the markets react until they actually hit the market. At first glance, this RM Ferrari Turb was definitely something way out of left field that I have never seen before. But nonetheless, they are Richard Mille and I'm sure it will be successful. Oh wait, Anna's got it on right now, look. <laughs> it's about that thin. Is that your, is that the horse? Is yes. that, I mean, that's terrible, Anna. <laughs> that's <f> terrible. <laughs> That's why I'm not uh, in animation. Oh, like the Ferrari? Yep. The new Ferrari, Richard Mille. Look at that. Uh, thoughts on the watch? Looks Quick. Like a, looks like an Amex card. Looks like yeah. an Amex card. Nick. I think it looks a little bland. Yeah. What? It looks a little bland. Like Chris. I like it, but I'd probably get the uh, Bulgari first. <laughs> well, you're probably right. It's a bit of a stretch price-wise. Yeah. And there comes my man Chris with his humbleness. Granted, the Bulgari Octo is a sub $20,000 watch, and we have a $2 million watch on the table. But Chris would rather take the Bulgari. <laughs> Good for you, man. Sabina? I like it. I wish it was nice I know, like, that's the whole point, but I think it would look nicer, thick, thicker. Let's take a vote. Anybody that thinks it's a flop, raise your hand. I'm not going to until I see it. Okay, I guess I don't have to. Well, I got, I got two coming next week, so we'll, we'll get to play with them. So everybody likes the Ferrari watch, especially Anna. She even made one. Anna? Yes. What did we get? Did we get a watch I'm going to keep? We did get a watch that you're going to keep. Oh, baby. Full set. The Longa Lumen. I think I want to keep this watch. So a pretty rare Alanga came in, Alanga Luminous, Alanga One, Grand Alanga One Luminous, which I absolutely loved. And it's gonna be another one of those things where Roman keeps a watch, puts it on his wrist, and somebody calls and says, no, it really must have that watch. And Roman says, no, it's my watch. And Roman is still gonna, unfortunately, probably sell the watch. But for now, it's mine. Yeah. I mean, it's still a light in your room, but I'm keeping this watch. Well, maybe I should keep that watch. No, I should keep that one. So what'd you do? You, you sold something, you took some trades? What'd you do? I took, uh, yeah, basically an even trade. Four? For two Royal Oaks. Which Royal Oaks? Uh, Royal Oak Chrono. And? And um, Royal Oak Date. I love this baguette though. Nick, what are you doing? All right, so it's uh, 11 o'clock, first day of July. Pretty good morning. Uh, GMT, Full Rose, Skydweller, Champagne Dial, Sea Dweller, 
and then uh, this other seed one as well. One six six zero zero reference. Good start to the month, and on to the next one. Yo, Chris. What's up? We got some watches right here. Uh huh. I need your top three watches. Top three favorite watches. I like the AP Vampire. Can't, can't ever go wrong with a long account of the uh, discreet watch. And probably the Date 8. You can definitely feel the weight on this when you wear it too. And I actually just sold this Vampire and working a possible deal on a Daytona Oyster Flex as we speak. As a lot of you know, I started uh, buying with Adrian whenever I first started here. Kind of been transitioning into sales lately. Been doing more of that, a lot more on the wholesale side, though I do have a good bit of retail clients that build up over the couple of months, which has worked out pretty good. I've learned a lot, of course, on the buying side from Adrian on pricing, how, how the pricing works, everything like that. Yeah, really looking forward to this com competition. We got Adrian and Anna on our team. Team Adrian is definitely, hopefully gonna pull out the win. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully Team Adrian wins. trade for the Royal Oak Chronograph, Black Dial, and the Royal Oak Non-Chrono, Blue Dial. Yeah. Oh, so they're in here. Awesome. Yeah. Very nice. And the box. Yeah, yeah. So. so one of my clients came in to do a trade. He wanted the Royal Oak Chronograph with the black dial and a 15500 Royal Oak Date with the blue dial. In return, we received the Sea Dweller, the Platinum Day Date with the baguette markers, the 5524 Patek Philippe, and the long one. I think I like this better than the Panda, actually. See, every time like when I look at this, I'm like, oh, I really love this. This is my favorite. Then I look at the blue dial, I'm like, that's my favorite. The blue's gorgeous, too. Yeah. I, uh, I, I admit the blue's gorgeous. What? You can also right now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> true. Do I write it out to your name? You can write it out to me, yeah. Okay. yeah. Or do you want a wire, or what do, you, what do you prefer? I mean, it doesn't matter to me, I don't care. She could just write you a check right now, and we'll be, we'll be done with it. Oh, and we better win this competition, because otherwise Adrian's going to be very pissed. We're literally going to freeze up $2 million mm -hmm. until September in order to sell a watch to somebody who is extremely visible, extremely famous, a celebrity, and on top of that, a huge businessman who could potentially become an investor here. If I have 15 minutes in a room with him, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Looks like we have a live one on the Jordan set, but there are a few interesting stipulations. Stay tuned.